Good afternoon, friends. I'm recording today's Bible Reflections while we're on our family vacation in Ithaca. It's our first time visiting the Finger Lakes. It's been fun exploring the waterfalls, Ithaca College, and Cornell University. This week in our one-year chronological Bible reading plan, we have continued reading back and forth between the story of the kings of Israel and Judah in 2 Chronicles and some of the prophets who announced God's judgment and promise of restoration. Last week, we read from Amos and Hosea, two of the shorter books called the, the Minor Prophets. This week, we've been reading some from Isaiah, one of the major prophets. It's 66 chapters long. Isaiah is divided into two scrolls. Uh, chapters 1 through 39 is known, are known as the Book of Judgment, and they deal with the, ch the situation in Israel's day the rise of Assyria and then Babylon, and the impending destruction of Jerusalem and exile of the people from their land. Chapters 40 through 66 are known as the Book of Comfort, and it anticipates their deliverance by the Persian king Cyrus and their return to Jerusalem from exile. Isaiah points towards the promise of the Messiah, this book is quoted more in the New Testament than any other prophet. We've read just a few small selections so far. Uh, chapter 6 is a vision of the throne room of God, where Isaiah sees angels flying around singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And Isaiah was frightened by the vision. He said, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. But my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. But an angel took a coal from uh, the altar and touched Isaiah's mouth with it and said, Your sin has been blotted out. And then Isaiah heard a voice from the throne saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. God gave him a harsh message to give to the people. He said, Go and say to this people, Listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. Harden the hearts of these people. Plug their ears and shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears, nor understand with their hearts, and turn to me for healing. And Isaiah said, How long, O Lord? How long must I proclaim this difficult message? And God said, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitants. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. Chapter 7. Uh, in chapter 7, the Lord spoke to King Ahaz when Judah was being threatened by two kings. And God said, ask for a sign. But Ahaz refused to ask God for a sign. And so Isaiah promised, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. That prophecy pointed to a fulfillment in Ahaz's time when those two kings uh, that threatened Israel were defeated. But it also pointed further ahead to a greater fulfillment, the coming of Jesus, the true Messiah King, who is called Emmanuel, God with us. Prophecy in the Old Testament is often like distant mountain peaks that we can see over the foothills in front of us. There was a fulfillment in the near term, but then there was a greater fulfillment yet to come in the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah, and the new creation. When I was at Luther College, every year we performed Handel's Messiah, 
which uses lyrics from all over uh, the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. With righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. In chapter 11, there is a vision of God's kingdom come on earth. It says, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It's a beautiful picture of the new creation, which is echoed in Revelation 21 and 22, where all of history is headed. Have a great rest of the week. See you in worship on Sunday.